Hey guys, welcome back to Come Again TV, the only place on YouTube where all geek culture collides. I'm Shannon, and today on the show, we're going to be taking a look at Marvel Comics Group, The Uncanny X-Men, number 159. This comic book holds a special place in my heart. This was the very first comic I ever bought uh, over time. Uh... It got removed from my collection. Uh, so I went on eBay and tracked it down. Not the exact copy that I had, but uh, a better copy, really. Uh, tracked it down. Uh, the eBay seller listed it um, as the Uncanny X Men number 159 from 1982. Uh, with a grading of 8.0. Uh, I won the bid. Uh, the shipping was $5. Uh, my bid was $2.74. My max bid was actually $10, but nobody else bid on it, so I got it. Uh, now, I also purchased the digital copy from on Comixology so that rather than going through each page i'm i am going to open it up and take a look at the condition and everything but rather than showing you guys each page and in detail and stuff uh i'm going to use the digital version to go over that for those of you who don't know this is when storm right there see her shadow there she got seduced by dracula in order to become his bride uh this takes place before rogue joined the x-men uh, because the issue before this uh the x-men ended up battling rogue so but as you can see here we got colossus nightcrawler wolverine Kitty Pride and then Storm's Shadow. Uh, in this issue, uh, Cyclops was away. He was visiting with his brother Havoc and his father, Corsair, who was planning on going back into space with the Star Jammers. Uh, they were there with, I believe, Gene and Polaris. Uh, at the time, uh, Polaris and Havoc were a couple. Uh, this was before Polaris knew she was Magneto's daughter. And yeah, I mean, let's go ahead and open it up. As you can see here, the back 8.0 is what he's got written on there. I almost don't want to open it because it's in such good condition, but I'm going to try to be very, very careful with this. All right, there's the back. Some of the things you could uh, mail away for or call away for back in the day very cool and it's got that vintage comic book smell now I'm gonna lay this down I'm gonna adjust the camera and I'll be right back and we're back I'm gonna try sorry about that guys I had a phone call I had to take um, but anyway let's take a look at this binding the binding is in really great shape uh, there's a little bit of a ding right there in the corners. But, and on that corner, and that corner. But overall, not bad. The color is still very vibrant. inside the comic it's got that uh, 
real old school look going to it. Um, the inner cover has some uh, good color on it. There's the uh, information. If you guys want to pause and read that. There we see Vampire Storm. That's all I'm going to open it and do. Let's go ahead and put it back in, in the uh, plastic and we'll talk about it a little bit. This is a really great condition comic. Uh, I'm really impressed. So, <clears throat> as I said, this was the first comic I ever added to my collection. Something just drew me to it. Uh, I didn't know much about the X-Men back then. I had a couple of the little rubber figures that had the uh, metal wire inside of them. Uh, I had Wolverine and Nightcrawler. Uh, but other than that, I didn't really know much about the X-Men. I didn't know how they got their powers. I didn't know what a mutant was. Visited a comic book shop, I believe, and saw this. And uh, my mom said I could get one, get a comic. So I picked this up. I saw it had Nightcrawler on the cover and Wolverine. I was like, all right, this, this might be a good way to get introduced and find out what X-Men are. Uh, this was also around the time when, I believe in second grade, uh, there was a school fair or something like that book fair or whatever and they had some little buttons little pin on buttons laying out and i saw one with colossus on it so i recognized him too from the button uh, i didn't know who he was at the time or whatever but i knew i saw him on a button so i i figured hey these these guys must be you know pretty popular to have you know toys made of them uh, buttons and all kinds of stuff so i Took it home. I read it. Actually, I think I might have got this in third grade. But I remembered seeing the pin from when I was in second grade. But third or fourth grade, somewhere around there. And I really liked it. It really stuck in my mind. Uh, Storm being seduced by Dracula. Uh, one scene I remember was Wolverine using his claws to try and make a cross to... Uh, send dracula away and dracula saying something along the lines of um you fool that's not going to work on me for you have to believe uh, <laughs> and he just like throws wolverine away or something like that it's been so long since i've read this but then nightcrawler he gets a uh, couple sticks together and he says something along the lines of, uh, well, if that's the case, then I believe. And it, it really screws with Dracula. He, you know, he hisses and kind of flees. But yeah, this was my first introduction to X-Men. This was before... I got this comic before the X-Men animated series came out. Um... Before I even got into comics, really. Uh, this was what introduced me to Marvel, or to X-Men. To Marvel Comics in particular. The only thing I knew about Marvel Comics before was Spider-Man. Uh, at the time, he was everywhere. As you can see here. Uh, Marvel Entertainment. A lot of, there were a lot of shows on TV that had, that were done by Marvel Productions or Marvel Entertainment that had the CGI Spider-Man uh, over the logo that I always thought was really cool. Uh, there's a comic book shop here in town back in the day that had a big sign out front that had Superman and Spider-Man standing back to back uh, with their arms crossed, you know, looking kind of macho. Uh, but yeah, that's really... All I really knew about Marvel was Spider-Man. You know, he was everywhere. He had his own animated... He had his own cartoons. Uh, Spider... Uh, uh, Spider-Man back in the 80s. And then... Uh, Spider-Friends. Or Spider-Man and Friends. Or what... I can't remember the, the actual name of it right offhand. But... 
you the X-Men weren't on TV. So if it wasn't on TV, I didn't really ha have much of an idea about it. You know, I know about Superman, Batman, and Aquaman, Green Lantern, all that. Because at the time, DC was on TV constantly. You had the superpowers. You had Galactic Guardians. You had the uh, New Adventures of Superman, the New Adventures of Batman and Robin. You had the Superman, Aquaman, Action Hour. All this. But you didn't real. The only Marvel stuff you had was Spider-Man. Yeah, back in the 60s and 70s, you had some stuff by filmation of you know, Spider-Man, Iron Man, uh, Fantastic Four, and then you had the Incredible Hulk live-action TV series. Uh, but that was, that was it. You know, everyone knew about Fantastic Four from that cartoon. Um, I didn't really know much about Iron Man. I was kind of turned off. At the time, because he had a mustache, and at that age, mustaches meant old. He was an old guy, <laughs> which I think is funny now, because he wasn't really that old. He just looked old because of the mustache. <laughs> so it didn't really interest me. And then I see, we go shopping, and my mom set a price limit on what we could buy, $5 each. So, my brother and I got Wolverine and Nightcrawler of the little rubber rubber figures with the wire frames. Uh, I think I got Nightcrawler and he got Wolverine, but I played with them more than he did. And I would make up little backstories for them, uh, be, since I didn't really know much about the X-Men. Didn't know anything about the X-Men. <laughs> uh, I had Wolverine getting... Uh, getting bitten by a radioactive wolverine or something like that <laughs> and i'm not sure what i had uh nightcrawler's origin story as but then when i found this comic it it introduced me to the world of mutants and it it really intrigued me and then on top of that it had vamp it had to do with vampires back in the day vampires were were everywhere they were the they were the boogeyman of the day so it was really cool seeing these superheroes go up against dracula and i i don't know what it was but it just the cover really intrigued me it really stuck in my mind uh the story stuck in my mind i i just i don't know i just really liked it so anyway this this video has gone on long enough. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and end it there. I'm really happy with this purchase from eBay. The seller was Supersonic Comics. Very, very great, very good deal. I, yeah, I would I would probably give it an 8.0 for the condition. Yeah, you had have some flaws in the corners, but everything else is pretty much mint. So anyway, Supersonic, if you're watching this, I'm uh, very happy with my purchase. Uh, and to the rest of you, if you haven't read this story, highly suggest, if you don't want to find the physical comic, it's on Comixology for 99 cents. You can't really beat that. Uh, so check it out. It's Uncanny X-Men number 159. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Take care, geeks. If you enjoyed that video, make sure you hit the subscribe button right there so you can stay up to date on all things geek culture. Also, make sure you check out one of these two playlists on the side for more videos just like the one you just watched. I'm Shannon for Comic Getting TV, the only place on YouTube where all geek culture collides. Take care, geeks.